<laughs> it's Father's Day. It's Father's Day. Church on the Hill, welcome to Father's Day weekend, and it joys my heart just to, to be with you in the, the worship center this morning, and those of you that are turn, tuning online, happy Father's Day to you as well, if that applies, and um, I want to give you a couple of your brief announcements, and then we've got some fun that we're going to do here in our service today for Father's Day, but uh, let me just give you a couple of your announcements. If you get a chance, uh, make sure that you grab these bulletins. Our staff works hard on them um, during the week to make sure we put all our information down, and so sometimes when I get up here and I share what's going on, um, it, some of it I don't always, I'm not always most accurate, and anyone who gives announcements knows that sometimes you miss little things, but it's always on there, and it's always on our church website as well if you go onto our calendar. So anyhow, um, just wanted to share a couple things with you. As usual, we have a little card here called our welcome card, but it's just not a welcome card. Um, it does a lot of different things, and if you read through this, you'll see. If you happen to be new with us and you would love to, us, for us to communicate with you, please fill that out, and you can drop it off at our welcome desk out there in our lobby. And then as well, you can utilize this to just communicate with us. Um, it's been a joy to have different communications come across where we're, um, you're telling us what's going on in your life. How can we be praying for you? And even this last week, we started praying over a couple different people here in our church that are just going through a hard time. And it's really nice um, as a staff just to come and be praying for you. So if there's something on your heart and mind, please put it down in the comments and drop it off there in the lobby. And so that's a great way to communicate. And again, online, you can do the same thing. You can go onto our website and communicate with us that way as well. A um, couple things here. This is so fantastic. Um, this is starting the first day of summer. Do you know it's like summer? Uh, I guess tomorrow's going to be like 158 is what I heard. No. Close. It feels that way sometimes, right? Um, it's a dry heat. No, it's not. It's just hot. Um, but uh, it's summertime. And so starting off in summer, and you'll also see in your um, bulletin a little bit some of the dates, but um, we're going to be having a special thing during the summers that Pastor Karen is setting up. And so on Tuesdays, um, in our kids' area over here, we're going to do something special for the kids and the families that we're going to be hosting a Summer Fun Wednesdays. And this is going to be a lot of fun, and there's going to be more information about this to come. And uh, we're also going to have a fun movie night that's coming up, and the dates are on um, in your bulletin as well in regards to that. And if you came last year, we had the big old huge blow-up screen, and we had an absolute blast with our kiddos and our families watching that. And then um, we're going to have all kinds of other um, things like back-to-school splash and what have you. So we're, we're going to have a whole lot of fun. And that's what I love about our church. We, we know how to have fun. And so we're going to be doing a lot of stuff for our kiddos. And then um, speaking of kiddos, this is going to be great. Uh, we're going to be having a child dedication coming up here on June the 10th. And um, I'm really excited about this. And I wanted to let you know it's not just for babies. Um, on July, did I see? That's why we need to look at this thing. So July 10th, because June 10th passed. But July 10th, I'm all excited about Father's Day. Can you tell? My kids are here. My family's here. I'm just excited. But um, yes, July 10th, here in our, our worship service, we're going to do a child dedication. And if you want to know what that's about, basically what we're going to do is bring the families up there with their kids. And we're going to pray a little blessing over the children. And we're also going to pray a special blessing over the parents and the, and the guardians. And we're also going to, as a, as a church, pray over you to help you watch over these families and help encourage and nourish them. And so that's going to be July the 10th. And um, if you have someone, um, we are talking as a staff, not just doing babies. We want to make sure that if during COVID there were babies born um, or young ones that have never been dedicated to the Lord, that we're going to go all the way up to, I think we said that we'd go up to like kindergarten age. And so again, if you know someone that would love to have their, their child prayed over, um, we'd love to have them on July the 10th. And you can communicate with us. We're going to have some special stuff that we want to send out to you as parents or guardians. So if you just want to fill out on the welcome card, hey, I've got a child that would like to be dedicated, we'd like to be have dedicated that day, um, put that information down, we'll reach out to you and then send you the stuff that we're going to have for that day. And I'm telling you what, church, it's going to be such a blessing. Um, Pastor Karen and I have met and we're talking about what we're doing with this and it's going to be an absolute blessing to everyone in attendance that day. So make sure you mark your calendars for that and thank you for the fix. And then the next thing is this, 
um, summer camps next weekend. And this kind of goes along with uh, my, my last little part where I'll talk about just our finances a little bit here at the church and how we give and how we give to investing in God's kingdom. Um, our goal at the beginning of taking kids to camp, our goal was to take 40 to camp. And PJ, did I get it right? Because I know you gave me a couple numbers. Are we two off of our 40 or one off of our 40? We are one off from taking 40 to summer camp, Church on the Hill. I, I tell you what, and again, when I first got here, um, Karen Dutcher, Karen Mazeo, and Josh, and uh, our other volunteers that were helping with our kids that time, Josh, well, we were having like three or four sometimes, uh, give or take, and, um, and now think about it. We're going to take 40 to summer camp. That, that's praise be to God. And so I'm just so excited, and so I'll plan on um, going with Pastor PJ and the team uh, next week. It's going to be a joy, and, and I'm, I'm never going to get the youth pastor out of me. It's just always going to be in me, but super, super excited. And then as well, on top of that, um, we ask that you would be generous in helping send some of these kids to, to camp. And church, you, you, you did it again. I, I got, no, as your pastor, please let me have this emotion just for a minute. And online, if you're watching, you just got to understand, this is a great church. Amen. This is a generous church. And God's going to do something miraculous with our church. Because a church that loves youth the way this church does, and you're so open-handed with your giving. I, I can't thank you enough. As you're, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us. And I can't, I just can't, there's no kid that's not going to be able to go to camp because of finances. I love that. And so I can't wait to see what God is going to do, PJ. I really can't. So I'm going to say this. If you have a teenager that still wants to go, um, I don't care if we add five more. We'll go to 1,000 points. They love us up there. And we'll just tell them, well, we'll find a way. We'll just take them. So just please reach out to Pastor PJ if there's anyone else on your heart. And if there's someone he's got to contact this week, we'll get them there. Okay. I have all my emotions. All right. Okay. So back on track. Um, this also goes back to our, our finances. You've been so generous. Uh, we are making budget and a little over. Um, we are moving this church forward. And again, I, as your pastor, I just want to say thank you. God bless you. And it's just been a blessing to watch how you guys are just so generous to in, investing into God's work. And so I just want to commend you. And if you feel led to be a part of what our church is doing um, and you want to invest financially into it, um, you can do it in a couple different ways. You can fill out one of the envelope uh, cards there in, in front of your seats. And you can put a check in there and say, hey, I want to be a part investing in God's kingdom at the hill. And then you can also do it online as well. And if you do it here in the worship center, we have a little box in the back that you can drop that off into. And, um, but again, it just joys my heart. I just thank you. You're, you're, the way you love God is incredible. Well, I can't wait to just stand up here and worship with you with our voices. And uh, so, church, would you bow your heads? Online, would you bow your heads with us as we pray before we go into worshiping God with song? Let's pray. God, I know that you're going to transform hearts and minds up at camp. For our students that already know you, Lord, I, I know that you're going to meet them in a special way. And you're just going to add upon what their parents have taught them. You're going to add on to what Pastor PJ and the team's been loving on them and caring for them this last season. And God, I know that for some of these kiddos that might be going with us that might not know you yet, Lord, I'm praying that you would put something special on their heart, God, that they would open their heart to you and start walking with you. God, I thank you again for this church that loves people, that loves this city. They're so generous, not just with their time and their talent, but with their treasure, Lord. The finances that you've given to them, they're so freely given back to you. And I praise you for that, God. And so, Lord, now we come before you to worship you with our voices. I pray that, God, that it would be a sweet, sweet sound to you. That anyone who is watching online or is here in our worship center this morning, you know exactly what they need from you today. And, God, I know that Father's Day for some people can be bittersweet. But, God, I pray that as we are here worshiping you, we remember that you are a gracious Father. You're a wonderful Father. And God, we want to praise your name and worship you this day. So we love you, God. And we ask again, you bless the remainder of our time together. In your name we pray this, Jesus. Amen.
Church, would you join me as we sing? Let's go. Well, good morning, Church on the Hill. Happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day. We're so happy you're here with us this morning. Let's go ahead and worship together and put our hands together this morning. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, oh, we've already won. And there is no weapon that has ever mark on you and there is no army no with the power to conquer true you've always been with us every battle you've already won oh we've already won so show me one thing he can do show me Show me waters he can part. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. It's possible. And there is a kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light.
haven't done this song yet. So we're excited for this one. Let's put our hands together. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory.
know you're here. You've always been here. And you'll always be.
You may go ahead and take a seat. Well, last year when I became your pastor, um, well, thank you, Mom. <laughs> um, I decided, I mean, I want to make sure that we, we have fun as a church. And on Father's Day, um, I know sometimes churches will throw up the Father's Day, you know, the dad jokes and all that, and they're never very funny at all. Us dads think they are, but they're not. I look at my kids and my jokes, right, they're just not funny. Um, but anyhow, uh, we would like to do a thing that we do this thing called King of the Hill. And so last year, we had some of our men come up here, and we have some trivia questions that we'll put up on the screens. And uh, we have this wonderful mug that my sister-in-law, Kelly, and by the way, my brother and sister-in-law are here today. Wave, Jim and Kelly. That's my brother and my sister-in-law. And uh, they made this mug for us last year, and then they made this one for us this year. So whoever wins this gets this huge stein. Now, what you put in it is up to you. Last year, my brother-in-law dominated, and he won the first annual. He uses his all the time, and he drinks a lot of, lot of water. I see what you put in this water. But we have on here the second annual Father's Day Challenge, and so what I did is I asked our staff to get me a couple names of people to maybe come up here and join us, and I know I've talked to a couple of you as well. So I would love to have uh, Jordan come up. Is, did Jordan, was he able to make it? Jordan, did you, yes, Jordan's going to make it. Fantastic. Jordan's one of our newer families here at the church, and so he's going to come up and be a part of this. Jordan, remind me, how many kiddos do you have? You have two children. Fantastic. Okay. It's going to be super simple. I'm going to give you this. It's A, B, C, and D. And then I'm going to also have, is, is Isaac Weber, did he, was he able to make it? Did Isaac Weber make it? Isaac, come on down. Come on down. Woo! This is Isaac. Isaac, how many, how many kiddos do you guys have? You have two as well? There's a trend going on here. <laughs> Come on down. It's good to have you this morning. He, he looks like a man's man. All right. Okay. Here we go. So the next one up here. Oh, by the way, I know that, he, didn't I ask you last week, are you feeling, is your back okay? You, you willing to come up? Eric? Yes? Yeah. Eric Smith, come on down. Yeah. Eric, remind me how many kiddos you guys, you've got. How many kiddos do you have again? Three adult, well. <laughs> okay, he, he online didn't hear that. I asked him how many kiddos he has. He says, I have three adults. Um, I'm going to correct him real quick. Are you still paying for things for your kids? Yes. <laughs> enough said, right? Enough said, enough said. All right. Well, I have two more spots, and I know that um, my, my brother and I said, you're going to defend your title? He's like, well, let's let the other guys have a chance. I was like, oh, that was very kind of you. So I would love to see Phil get up here. Phil, would you come up? Phil, you got to come up. Come on. Boys, make your dad get up here. Come on. Make your daddy get up here. Come on. You... Now, Phil, I keep getting the number wrong. Is it true you had 12 sons? 12? It's not 12. Half a dozen. Half a dozen. He has six. He has six. And then I've got one more slot. I need one more man, unless we're going to make Tom come and defend his title that would come up. A dad of all dads. Who else would join us? I know last year I said something from the balcony. Uh, Reggie, like, called out. But Reggie is at home watching. Reggie, we love you. But um, there's one person I'm going to call out if someone else doesn't come. So one more dad. One more dad. I know it's going to be Steve Christensen. Everyone knows that. Steve, get on down here. That's right. All right. So you know. Inside this stein is $150 to Dickie's Barbecue. Yes, right? And so they're going to be simple questions, and we'll pull them up on, up on the screen. And if I could have you guys scoot in just a little bit so online can see you as well, because we don't want to leave our online family out of this. But here is going to be our first Father's Day challenge question, and it'll be up on the screens, gentlemen, so you can look. And the answers are A, B, C, or D. I think we have it. Boop and beep. Okay, here we go. All right. King of the Hill, Father's Day Challenge. I'm so thankful that Harvey picked the guy that had a little bit of a gut. Amen. All right. Yes. Great. So here's our first challenge. And um, if I could, can I have, um, Casey, would you help me out? Trying to help me keep count on the guys here. And uh, so here's your first question. Which is not, and I made sure I underlined the not because I was the kid in school who always just read over the not. So which is not a physical indicator of a poisonous snake, of a poisonous 
snake. Of a poisonous snake. The answer is A, the tongue. So triangle head, that's a big indicator. Uh, Definitely uh, the the eyes, that the pupils are like a cat. I didn't know that one. And by the way, if you're up that close to it, too late. (laughs) Right? Right? Am I right? Absolutely. All right, let's get the next one here. All right, number two. How many books does the average man read a year? Is it nine, three, 12, or Kim gave men no read? Only watch TV. I got D, 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 and B. The average, the average guy. The answer is nine. Nine. This is very interesting. Here's some facts on this. Here's some facts on this. Basically, ladies, you on average read 12 books a year, and guys on average read nine. Up here, we have a lot of cavemen here at the hill. That's all right. When the apocalypse hit, cavemen are needed to go out and beat stuff. Yeah, right? Okay. Here's number two. I mean, number three. Third question is this. Which one of these four dogs ranks best for hunting? Now, I took out the number one because everyone's going to know that one. But which one of these four dogs is ranked best for hunting? Is it A, the American foxhound? B, the labradoodle? They're so cute. C, the English Springer Spaniel, or D, the Beagle? We have A, D, A, A, A. And the answer is Beagle. That's what's up, E. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, here we go. Fourth question for the king of the hill. Which wood burns the longest in a campfire? Now, I'm looking at our, our scout masters here, and I know you guys already know this answer. So which wood burns the longest in a campfire? Is it A, cherry wood, B, maple, C, hickory, or D, oak? Answers? Ooh. Hey. Hey. All right. Answer is? C, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we were in the Boy Scouts? No. Nope. All right. But we have YouTube. There you go. All right. Number five. Which one of these wild plants are edible? So if you're out in the wild and you don't know what to eat, which one of these are edible that you can eat it? Is it A, dandelions? B, clovers? And yes, the four, like leaf kind, is good. C, green seaweed? Or D, all of the above? It is? The answer is? D, yes, all the dads got it. All right, we're not going to starve when we're out there. Dandelions, really? Now, I want to know, even when they got white and you blow on it, we can eat them then too? It would be awfully hard, but I guess you can. I guess you can. All right. Next question. And we're going to know who the real sinners are up here on the stage. Which hand in Texas Hold'em is better? Is it A, straight, or B, Flush. Mm Mm-hmm. And the answer is A. A. Wait. Let's see who all had A. Who all had A? Okay. We see who. We know who the sinners are. Okay. All right. I love poker too. By the way, I'm not going to lie. I love it. Okay. This is very important. We got to get this next one down. Number seven. What does the most expensive steak in the world cost? So if the most expensive steak that's out there, how much would it cost to go and have this served up to you? And by the way, it's this Wagyu special tomahawk steak called the Pappy. I love it's called the Pappy steak. It's the Pappy steak. Is it A, $1,000, B, $600, C, $2,500, or D, $4,000 plus? You get to get a car for that. And the answer is... Hey, hey, $1,000. Goodness gracious. It better be fantastic. All right, next question, number eight. Which is the hottest pepper? Is it A, the ghost pepper? B, the Naga Viper pepper? Or is it C, the Carolina Reaper? 
Or is it D, the Trinidad, is that Morongo? 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 Well, it's a scorpion pepper. That sounds bad. That sounds bad. That sounds real bad. What do we got? Any hot, hot people here? Okay. Then the answer is C. 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 Um, this thing was genetically engineered, and I don't know why they need to start messing with what God made, but I guess it's a thing. So, yes, yeah, C. And I guess they just came out with another one. It's called the X pepper. It's even hotter than that. Yeah, and these people, I mean, uh, goodness gracious, I mean, hell's hot enough. Why would they add more just pain? All right, here's number nine. Which animal is the most dangerous in the world? And when we say dangerous, meaning kills the most amount of people. Is it A, snakes? B, mosquitoes? C, dogs? Or D, hippos? Answer is... B, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, yes. Mosquitoes actually kill a projected 725,000 people a year because of malaria and other things. Can you believe that? It's crazy. It's crazy. What's our, what's our count right now? Four, four. Four, four. So we got three fours? Okay, I need these three guys to stay on the stage. The other two guys... Congratulations on not winning. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, by the way. Yeah. Okay. See it front and center here. Front and center here. No, nope, front and center. There's a physical challenge. I'm going to have, no, no push-ups. I promised I would be fair because I know E's back's been kind of bugging him a little bit. So you guys got to stand in the middle. Now, one by one, we're going to have you go and do this. Because every dad that goes out to any amusement parks and I know that my brother and I's dad, he could just say one word, boys, and we had to stop what we were doing, or he would whistle. So I need each and every one of you, one at a time, to whistle the best you can using your fingers. Using your fingers. You want to start? <whistles> boys, did that scare you? Do you remember that when dad would do that? E, you're out. Can't do it. I'm out. Can't do it. Oh, man. Get up here. Hold it up proud. Show the camera. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Well, any man that has six children that are all boys deserves a tall drink of water. <laughs> mm. I love it. I love it. Oh, man. And by the way, you boys do have an uh, amazing dad. I just love your dad. He's a great man of God. Well, with that being said, we're doing this sermon series here at our church uh, that we've been going through called Hey Coach. And I started thinking about dads as coaches. And I know for me, growing up, um, my dad and my brother's dad wasn't the greatest example of a dad for us all the time. And so we had to learn by watching a lot of other men um, in the church as we were coming up in the Lord. And so I titled our message today, Father Figures, Father's Figures. And so as Christian men, we got to understand that we're not only dads to our kiddos, if we have them, but we're a dad to others. And other young men are constantly looking at us, and young ladies as well. And so I wanted to just talk to you today about this idea that a father figure is very, very important, and it doesn't have to be a biological dad. And I know a lot of us didn't maybe have our biological dad around a lot. Um, I didn't know this, maybe some of you did, that uh, our past president, our former president, Gerald Ford, I guess he didn't even know that his dad until he was 12 that was his adopted dad. He didn't even know that his adopted dad wasn't his real dad. And he talked about the relationship that they had and how they grew up um, uh, just not knowing, just figuring, this, this is my dad. And he just loved him. As soon as he found out about his adoption, he's like, it doesn't matter to me because my dad is my dad. And there's been men in the church that have done that for me and my family over the years. And I'm just so thankful for that. And so in our Bibles, we can see all kinds of different father-type figures that are there that, um, that encourage. I think about the Apostle Paul. Um, a couple times, the Bible doesn't say if he had any children at all, but he, he calls two different men. He calls Timothy and Titus sons. 
So he calls Timothy that a few different times, like a spiritual son. And then he calls Timothy this. He says that Timothy is my true son in the common faith. So today I want to talk to you about this idea about being a a father figure, um, not only to our own kids, but to um, other people that might be around us and and, um, maybe not knowing the Lord yet. So I'm going to pray one more time, and then we're going to get into the scripture, and uh, and I'm going to share what God put on my heart for us this Father Day. Would you pray with me one more time? Let's pray. God, I don't know what it is about today. I am so out of my mind excited. Maybe it's having my, my children here, and you know how much I love them, Lord, and I pray for them daily. God, just like the other God fearing men in our church, they were doing, we're doing our best to try to raise up our children. God, maybe I'm excited because, you know, my, my one nephew's here with his beautiful bride, and, and um, my, my brother and my sister in law are here, Lord. But God, maybe it's, I'm excited because there are also men in this church that, even in my short year being here, I, I look at them like a dad. And God, that's the blessing that we have in you. And so, God, I pray again that your spirit would speak to all of us. Because, Lord, I do know that, man, this could be a, a heavy Sunday for some. I know for our family, Lord, um, we're, we're, we're missing our dad and our papa very, very much, Lord. And what a godly example he set for us. But God, I know that we have this, this, this um, encouragement in you, Lord, knowing where he is at. And so God, whoever is here today watching online or here in our worship center that may they have a great relationship with their dad, I just pray that they would celebrate you because they had that. And God, for those of us that maybe didn't have the the most ideal father relationship um, with our biological dads, if we knew them, that God, that you would fill in those gaps with other God-fearing men. That Lord, that we would learn from your scripture on how to be that for the next generation coming up. And I think about the young couples that are at our church right now. That God, that we could, as our senior saints could pass down wisdom to them. And and that, Lord, that we would just raise up another generation of God-fearing parents that honor you and love you. So, God, I ask again a blessing over this time. In your name we pray this, Jesus. Amen. Well, we're going to be in the the book of Exodus. And um, I couldn't shove it all into your, your bulletin. So we're going to show some up on the screen. Some will be in your bulletin. But there's this beautiful interaction between Moses and his father-in-law, Jethro. Now, I don't have time to unpack the whole story about these two. But um, again, uh, Moses was on the run. He had left Egypt, and uh, his people were in slavery in Egypt at that time. Um, He runs into these ladies, protects them. Uh, This guy, Jethro, it was his daughters. And so he told his daughters, go get this guy, bring him back to our place. He hands off one of his daughters in marriage to Jethro. And, um, and there's this bomb that starts, and he takes, he takes Moses into his family. He takes Moses in, not really knowing much about him, but then he puts him to work as a shepherd, as a shepherd. And so, kind of give you some background on, on these two just a little bit. So, in Exodus 18, one says this. Now, Jethro, he was the priest of Midian, and the father-in-law of Moses... And he heard everything that God had done for Moses and for his people in Israel and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now, if you don't know this story, and I know when I first started going to church, I never heard this story. But there's this awesome thing that God did. He did miracle after miracle after miracle in regards to helping these slaves become free. And um, again, uh, that's something, if you don't know much about this story, man, you need to go back and, 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 and read this story. It's incredible. So Moses' father-in-law, he doesn't have an eye account of what has been happening, but people are traveling through where he lives, and he's starting to hear some of these stories, and so he decides that he's going to go and have a conversation with Moses. So in Exodus 18.5, we pick up there, it says this, that Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' sons and his wife, I guess Moses might have just pushed them out there just because, you know, for safety reasons, be there with granddad. And so he comes out to the wilderness where all these people are hanging out and where they were camped near the mountain of God. Now, different people have different opinions on how many people there might have been at that time. The estimates are anywhere from 35,000 people all the way up to 2 million people 
um, were out there in the wilderness that, that came out of Egypt at that time. Now, I would land personally on the bigger number, on the bigger number, just because of some of the historical things that they found out in the desert. So anyhow, there's just masses and masses of people. And so here's where we go. Is my mic really trying to go out on me right now? Okay. Exodus 18.7 says this. So his father-in-law is coming up to him. He's coming out to see him with his wife and his children. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. And this is interesting. He bowed down and he kissed him. He bowed down and he kissed him. What is he doing here? He's showing major respect. What's interesting, and I don't know about you, when you read the scripture, I go, well, what's missing here, Ed? It doesn't say anything that he greeted his wife or his kids. I'm assuming he did. I'm assuming he did. So he went down, he bowed down, and he kissed him. He showed him this great respect, and they greeted each other, and then they went inside the tent. And so your first little fill in this morning for this Father's Day uh, talk is this, that great father figures should be honored. Great father figures should be honored. And I know for some of us that didn't grow up with the most idyllic dad figure in our lives, to find men, godly men, to honor. Um, our church has heard this story time and time again, but I'm just going to tell it if you're newer here to our church or you're tuning in for the first time. Um, uh, my dad and my mom were a mess. My mom was out living with her husband in Mexico, partying um, and doing her life. And my dad decided once, I, once I, um, uh, we came back to California, he decided he would leave California again and basically go after um, one of his girlfriends that lived out of state. And he just left us. And at that time, we're living at my grandmother's house in Rialto. And praise be to God, my brother and my sister-in-law, who are here today, they lived in that house. Now, I have told you this, and I've mentioned this to them not too long ago. God just re reaffirmed inside of me. Um, the reason why I came to know the Lord as Savior was watching those two accept him. Their marriage was a mess. And I just watched, and the way they talked was different. The way they honored each other was different. And I remember just sitting there, and they started taking me to church, and it wasn't really that great of a church but they were faithful people at that church. But man, and I was, it wasn't all that. They didn't have the music we have here. They had wooden pews. You remember that, brother? Wooden pews. And I, I couldn't sit still. and was creaking all the time. The pastor just kept going, sit still, kid. Um, he would understand now that I haven't changed. I still move a lot, right? <laughs> That's why I love our children. But there was a point where my brother and sister-in-law, their family was growing and they decided to buy a house in San Bernardino. And they took me in. And so I just thought as I was writing this, I'm giving you honor, my brother. Where would I have been without you two? Where would I have been? See, father figures step in the gap. They step in the gap. And my brother was a cement truck driver, and he also owned his own cement truck business for a season. And he worked hard. He'd get up so early and work so hard to put food on our table and take in a kid. He's trying to do his own family and took me in. That's a father figure that needs to be honored. And there's many more of you, and I can go on and on about the different men of God who have just poured into my life. And some of you, like you, Ed, you poured into me. And thank you for that. So a great father figure should be honored. My brother's going to be mad at me later. He's going to be like, you really going to call me out like that? Yeah. <laughs> he hates that stuff. That's okay. He still loves me. Let's go on to Exodus 18. 8 says this. Moses told his father-in-law about everything that the Lord had done. So he's getting the full picture on the Red Sea parting and how there's a, a cloud by day that's shading them and there's a pillar of fire at night and he's talking about all this other stuff. And so he's sharing this wonderful, all these other stories at this point. And so he's talking about all these things. He's talking about the hardships of trying to lead all of these people. But he's talking to them. He says that, that, that he's talking to them about Pharaoh and, and, and the Egyptians and Israel's sake and about all the hardships they'd gone through and that, that, that all that way along, that the Lord had saved them. I love that. And so we can't wait to tell our father figures what's going on in our life, the positive things that are in our life. You that are younger and you tell me as your pastor the different things, how God's working on your life, it joys my heart. 
So in Exodus 18, 9, it says this. So Jethro was delighted to hear this about all the good things that God had done for Israel and how he was rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. So our our second fill-in today is this. A great father figure delights. This idea that great father figures delight in hearing how God is working in our lives. They want to hear it. They want to hear it. Um, Nothing joys my heart than when my children start sharing with me all the different things on, on how opportunities are coming their way. And the excitement of how they were growing in the Lord. And so there's this idea of this, um, this delight. I know that when I first started here at the church, and when dad was still with us, um, after church there'd be times that you as a church would come and go, Pastor, that was a really good sermon. i go, well, thank you, that's nice. And I'd get in the car and Tammy goes, man, babe, that was a really good sermon. i go, well, babe, th- thank you, I appreciate that. You're my wife, you're supposed to say that, right? But I, when I'd get home, when we were living at mom and dad's house, And when dad said, Jay, that that was a great sermon, there was just this more weight to it. So there's something about a father figure delighting in in the children, maybe not even his own children, his own biological children, but but these people who are out and about who are, maybe don't have a father uh, in their lives, but this person who fills in the gap is that father figure in their life. So it goes on in Exodus 18, 13. It says that the next day that Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. Now, what's happening here is there's all these disputes happening with all of these people. And so Moses, the leader, is going, well, someone's got to deliberate between these people. So I'm going to step in, and I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to hear them out. Now, can you imagine, let's just say the estimate, let's go from that 35,000 that some people think it is, I think it was closer to 2 million, but let's just say it's somewhere in the middle, I don't know. Let's say it's a million. How do you go about dealing with all those people? I mean, have you ever gone to the DMV? (laughs) And that system that they have there, what is this letter and number thing, and then it doesn't seem like it coincides, have you guys seen this? And I don't know if you've ever gone to the DMV and they have two lines, and then you stand in one line for like 45 minutes only to find out, once you get there, that you're in the wrong line. <laughs> Even though you ask three different people, is this the right, oh yeah, that's the line, okay, you know? But can you imagine these people taking a ticket, and maybe their ticket number is 123,000, and they're looking at going, wait, what? And then they hear this, now serving 52. And so there's this idea that is going on here. So Moses is sitting there, and it says here in Exodus 18, 14, when his father-in-law, Jethro, saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said this, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone, again, the key word, alone, sit as judge? While all these people stand around you from morning till night, can you imagine dealing with people from morning to night? Connie in our office understands that if I have any counseling appointments and if they're harder ones, man, if I'm in there for an hour or two, I am drained, absolutely drained. Could you imagine dealing with people's stuff all day long? Incredible. And so your third feeling this morning is this, for this idea of father figures, that great father figures... Ask great direct questions. And I know sometimes we don't like those, but they ask these great questions. And I know some of you are filling in the gap um, for, 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 for younger men. And sometimes you have to ask things about them like, so tell me, why are you doing that? I'm not looking at any of you in particular for a reason. I'm just saying, okay? So watch what happens here in verse 15 and 16. Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, um, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. So your fourth feeling is this. I know I'm powering through those because we want to make sure that we have time to, to get out and celebrate our dads today. But the fourth is this one. Great father figures make it easy to give an honest answer. They make it easy to give an honest answer. 
You know, there are times when people question you, especially someone you look up to, and especially for us men, when we look up to another man, and when they ask us a hard, direct question, sometimes it's hard to um, just be totally honest because we're afraid of what's going to come back. But obviously Moses had built a relationship with his father-in-law, Jethro, that he could be open and honest with him. And so there's just something so beautiful there. And then it goes on here in in verse 17. Watch this. Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. We hate hearing that. We hate hearing that. But our fifth fill-in today is this. Great father figures tell us the truth and shoot straight with us. They tell us the truth. You know, we, we joke around a lot that, um, could you imagine if you went to the doctor and maybe something really bad is happening to you, something's just not right, and the doctor finds out that it's a terminal something. And in our church, we've had to deal with terminal something a few times already within the last year. And we want our doctors to be brutally honest with us. Like, tell us the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We, we, got, we got to know. But great father figures know this, that, hey, I, I'm pouring into you. I want you to know that I love you, and I'm going to tell you the truth. And I'm going to share it with you. And he wasn't trying to hurt Moses here. He's just trying to be um, a, a good father figure to him. And so again, if we're thinking about us being father figures to others, let's make sure that we're telling the truth to some of these youngsters that are coming up. It says here in Exodus 18, 18, it goes on to say that you and these people that you're talking to, Moses, who come to you will only wear yourself out, yourselves out. I think it's very interesting. It's yourselves. He's talking about not just you, but them too. Standing in line for hours and hours, it's exhausting, Um, The last time we went to Disneyland, um, we got in line, and I'm not a fan of standing in line. I hate lines. They just, they they suck my soul out. They just do. And so I think next time I go, I'm going to get one of those little cart scooters and just sit and go around. I'm going to be that guy. So if you see me, that's me. And um, you're like, Pastor Jay, is that you? It's me. I'm going to do it. And, um, but you've ever gotten in line, and right before, maybe you waited 45 minutes to an hour for some of these rides. And you get in line, and you get up there, and right before you get on, you hear, and then over the intercom comes, we're sorry to let you know, the ride is now shut down, and we don't know how long it's going to be. And then usually the kids look at you and go, we should wait. No, we're not going to wait. And, um, and again, I remember one time, I think the last time we went, we went out, and I just went to one of the people there. I was like, hey, we were in line for like 45 minutes. As soon as we got there, it shut down. I mean, we're literally, they open up the gates, we're getting ready to go, and they go, nope, stop, get back. You're going to have to get off. So I went and I asked, I'm like, could we get like little vouchers so we could, could come back later? And I think they had to take us, right? They had to take us like to another place to get the ticket. And the person's like, we can't do that. I'm like, oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. But what he's saying here is this. Most you got to understand, you're wearing the people out. You're wearing yourself out. And Moses had a good heart. He was trying to do his best. But Jethro knew something very critical. And this is why sometimes father figures are so tough on us. Here's why. They've been through life. They've experienced some stuff. And I know when my brother, even living under his household, and he would tell me things, and he's my brother, pseudo dad, and I'm like, okay. He'd tell me something like, I probably rolled my eyes. Maybe not. Maybe I did. If I was smart, I probably walked away and did it. But this idea of, we don't want to hear it sometimes. But what they're doing is they're pointing out to you things that, listen, I want you to be successful in your life. Here are some things that I've learned the hard way. I want you to succeed. And that's why they're so honest and truthful to you sometimes even though we don't want to hear it. So number six, your feeling today is this. Great father figures help you see what you don't see. Great father figures help you see what you don't see. We call those blind spots. Blind spots. 
Is someone coming to your mind as you're reading this story? It is to me. Many, many, many men. In Exodus 18, 19, it goes on, it says this. He says, listen now to me. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice. I'm going to give you your next fill, and then I'm going to unpack this just a little bit. Fill in number seven. Great father figures give advice in a way that make you want to listen. It's interesting here. He says, okay, son, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to give you some advice. Advice. Too many of us will go to um, our kids or um, our, 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 our kids that aren't our kids, but we're a father figure to them, and we'll, we'll tell them, like, boy, you don't know what you're doing. And they kind of talk down to you. Have you ever had those people talk down to you? They make you feel like you're, like, this big. But Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, is saying, like, listen, listen to me, son. I'm going to give you some advice. What you do with it, it it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. So this idea that these great father figures give advice and they make you want to listen. So he points that out a little bit. Then the the latter part of that verse, it says this. So he says, listen now to me and give, and I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. He's telling them, listen, listen, that, that what you're doing, it, it, it was good. But there's a bigger job for you. So your eighth villain is this. Great father figures can help you prioritize what is most important. They can just speak straight to you. This is what you need to do. Trust me on this. And by the way, our, our younger students that are in here, I'm just telling you, probably not until you get to about 30, you realize like, oh, dang, mom and dad knew what was up. They knew some stuff. I still get texts and messages from kids that were in my youth group years and years ago. They're going, Pastor Jay, remember when you said? And I don't remember because there's so many of them. I'm like, okay. And they go, you were right. And I, and I write back, I know. <laughs> I had to learn that myself, right? And so Jethro's trying to, to, to instruct him and teach him. And it says here in Exodus 18, 20 through 22, it says, Here's what you need to do. Teach them his decrees. Teach them about your God. And give them instructions. And show them the way that they are to live and how they are to behave. I learned a lot watching my brother work hard. I watched how faithfully he'd get up on Sundays exhausted from the work week. Sometimes he'd work into Saturdays and then the next day go to church. And my brother-in-law does the same exact thing. Works all night and then comes to church on Sunday morning. I don't know how you do it. But we model this. And so he's saying to him, listen, okay. And it goes on and says, okay, you need to show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. Verse 21. But he says this. This is what you need to do. You need to select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, that are trustworthy men, who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. This is organizational leadership at its best. He, he understands this. He says, have them serve as judges for the people at all times. But have them bring every difficult case to you. So the big cases, the really big, big ones, we're, we're going to bring to you. But all the other little things, that other people need to handle that. Other people need to handle that. And so he points it out to them. And so all the big cases are coming to him. Then it says um, to them, hey, the little things, the simpler cases, you guys decide. Let them decide those things. And it says that they will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. Can I speak to some of our friends that might be watching online? Don't go with this life alone. I'm telling you right now, and I don't know what it is about us men, we think we could do it by ourselves. We is always better than me. Always. The Bible points it out time and time and time again. And I know sometimes there are father figures in our life and they start talking, you're like, oh gosh, again. I beg you to listen. 
and to learn from them. And so we look at the scriptures, and it's so rich with this. And this Father's Day, I do. I, I hope that you become a father figure to the younger generation, for those of us who are a little bit older, and the younger generation come up and just pull from us, pull from us. How did you raise two great kids? I mean, I, my daughter's here this morning. They're wonderful women. I'm so proud of you girls. They kick butt. They work hard. Wait, Heather, does my one daughter, she work hard for you? Yes. Okay, good. All right, just making sure. My youngest works at the preschool with Heather. And I think I told Heather when Sarah was interested in the job, I said, she's your hire and your fire. Meaning, if she can't keep up, she's not getting the job because I'm the pastor here. And if you fire her, me and you are still good. Just give her a severance. Okay, all right. <laughs> but, but I'm proud of them. Ever since they were little, I indoctrinated our children and talked about the Lord and taught them the ways of God. But I also talked about this, thing, this idea of work ethic. We never had to like battle our girls on, on things in regards to school and work. I mean, they just, they kill it. I'm so proud of both of you girls. And so Jethro's pointing out to all these people. Let's look at 18, um, Exodus 18, 23. He says, if you do this, if you listen to my advice, if you actually follow through with what I'm telling you, son, and then he puts the word and. Do you see the and in there? Guys, look at the scripture. It says and. So if you do the advice I give you and God so commands. If this lines up with what God is saying, this advice I'm giving, if you do it, Something very special is going to happen here. And so he's suggesting, he's making something so clear here. So number nine for your feeling is this. Great godly um, father figures know that their advice does not supersede God. Period. Period. Well, the Bible, Pastor Jay, says that we're to honor our father and mother. Yes, if they are teaching you and telling you to do things that are of God. If they're telling you things that are opposite of what God teaches in his word, then yes, there's going to have to be some disobedience there. And you're like, okay, Pastor Jay, you said, well, you better check with me before you go disobeying. Because the scripture might be pointing out something that you don't know yet. So this advice doesn't su supersede God at all. In the la latter part of, of Exodus 18, 23, it says this. So if you do this, and it lines up with what God is saying to do, he says, you will be able to stand the strain. And all these people will go home satisfied. Satisfied. What's it saying here? Trust me on this. If it lines up with God, you are going to be successful. Trust me on this. And I know there's some dads sitting here and their kids are in attendance. I know mine are too. And I'm sitting there going, are they hearing this? I'm glad Pastor Jay's saying it. Because again, God's put these men in your life. And again, if you don't have a man, by the way, our, our younger men in here that are trying to raise the youngsters, I'm here for you. Whatever you need. I, 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 want, I want to pour into your life. I want to help you raise your two children like I raised my two children. I want to be by your side on this. There are other men in this church that want to do the same for you. God has a plan, and we just need to follow it. This idea that, that Moses, if you do this, you're going to be less stressed out, and by the way, the people are going to be happy. You know what we call that in the business world? That's a win-win. Brian, right, right, when we're doing business, like, you want to do the best for the client, but you also got to win as well. We can't just lose all the time. We've got to make a living. A win-win. And so he pushes into this a little bit. And look here at the, at the tail end. In Exodus 18, 27, it says this. 
I'm sorry. Exodus 18, 24, I skipped it. I love this part. I'm glad I didn't skip it. It says Moses listened. Best advice I can give, and by the way, and there might be some of you, you older men of God in this, in this, in this worship center, that is you're pouring in my, Rich, you poured in my life. You're one of the many men that have poured in my life. Even though you do use the word boy once in a while. We need to listen. If you see that they're an honorable man, if you see that they're a person who's following God, if you see that, listen. You know, there's a time and place where you sit there and go, man, I don't, I don't see it that way, but because you said so, I'll do it. Because you said so, I'll do it. And God wants us to understand that we, we start building what, like a constellation of people around us. And that's what we're going to do in this baby dedication. We're going to be talking about making sure that you have a tribe of people that are watching out for you and watching out for your kids. This idea of that we have people that are going to come and lift us up and help us. But we got to listen. And so Moses listened to his father-in-law is what it says here in verse 24. And he did everything he said. He did it. He did it. Now, if you don't know this story, go back and look. Huge success. Saved millions of people's lives because of it. We have the gospel and what we know about Jesus because of this remnant of the Jewish people. I'm so thankful that, 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 that Jethro came into his life. And by the way, it's not really clear. Um, Jethro kind of worshiped God a little bit, but he says he's a priest over in this other country. And his understanding of God, the way that Moses understood God, was different. But I got a feeling by hearing these stories and what have you, he was learning something about this. But he had a relationship with Moses that he could speak into his life. And because of that, people were saved. So it ends with this. I thought it was kind of interesting. Exodus 18, 27. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way. This isn't sent like, hey, could you please leave? Like, it's not that. He knew that they had a relationship. But Moses' father-in-law knew he had to do this on his own. He had to do this. I taught you this one thing. You follow God, you've listened. Now you follow God, you honor God with this. Now wait and see what's going to happen. And we don't hear much about Jethro after this. And so there's going to be a time for those of us that are older that are pouring into people's lives. And by the way, they're going to have to decide if they listen or not. But then we sit back and and we wait for to see, are they going to do what God's called them to do and be? And that's what happened. And so... His father-in-law leaves, and then here is Moses leading this wonderful movement of God. With that being said, I want to have our worship team come up, and this is what the Lord put on my heart for this morning. And I can't remember if I did this last year. But I love as we prepare to sing this last song. I want to pray a prayer of blessing over all the men that are in here. And I know some of our kids have moved out of state, our grandkids aren't around, but for those of you that are here, there's the rest of us that are here. We, We need you. We need our senior men of God to pour into our hearts and our lives. I need you as, I need that. There are some of you, you, you younger dads that are just trying to figure it out. You're trying your best. Again, I, I hope you open up your heart to other men in your life. Let us speak into your life. Let us love on you. So I'm going to pray real quick before we sing this last song that God would use you men. And those of us that need to be reached out to, we let you, we, you, I don't even know how to say this. I'm so geeked up today, Lord. 
let us be a part of what God's calling you to be as a man. Let's pray. God, my mind is racing at a speed I don't even understand. Maybe it's because, Lord, I, I see what you've done for me. And God, I know it, it, the journey that I've been on, it, 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 was, it was hard. But God, I went and trained for the world. And God, I pray for these men of this church. I pray, God, for the older men that they, they wouldn't shy away of speaking into those of us that are younger than them. God, that they would speak the truth, of course, in love, and they'd point out things and ask us questions about our marriages, ask us questions about our work, they'd ask us questions about things that maybe on the outside don't look so God-honoring. And that, God, we would listen to them. So, God, right now I'm praying with your spirit would just come over them that they, they would be re-energized to know that they have a purpose here at the hill. God, you've still got them here. Use them mightily. God, for those of us that are still um, trying to, um, uh, we're working on our marriages and we're still trying to, us as men, trying to raise our children, even if they are adults like Eric's. God, would you help us to have ears to listen to some of these older men? God, would you help us to open up our hearts and our minds to these men that have gone through so much before us and we would listen to God honoring counsel. And God, I'm, face and names are coming to me time and time. All the different guys that have just poured into me, Lord, I pray that I would be able to do the same for these younger men that are at our church. God, I think about that young boy who was so far from you years ago watching how you could transform a marriage and a life. And God, I was, I was so attracted to that. And God, I just pray if there's any men that are watching or any men um, who are in our worship center worshiping with us today that don't know you, God, I pray that they would just keep coming around the church, that they would see that there are men who have struggled too with all kinds of different things, but they're doing their best to honor you and that they would see you in them and that, God, they'd open their hearts to you. So, God, for this Father's Day, I pray a blessing over all of these men, not just the fathers, all of these men, that you'd use them mightily wherever you have them in this season and that, God, they would grow and become the men of God you want them to be. So, Father God, again, I'm so geeked up today. Man, I'm, my mind is going so fast. Thank you, Father, for choosing us to follow you. We love you, God. In your name we pray this, Jesus. Amen. Church, would you rise and let's close out with one last song. A thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I.
I can hardly speak a peace so unexplainable I I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still I'm going to do something bold right now. Um, Jim, would you come up on stage with me, please? I, I'm doing this because I love you. Um, I, I want people online to see you as well. There was one Sunday when we were at our last church, and um, we had the Evans family pews. That was our seats. And um, as the worship team was ending one Sunday, I could see the worship team's faces starting to come alive. And um, I was like, oh my goodness, uh, our pastor had said, if anyone received Christ as Savior, to come forward, and we'd love to pray with you to accept Christ. And I remember going, ooh, who is it? It must be some VIP, someone important. Remember that Sunday? turned around and it was our dad we, we were estranged and he was trying to make things better with us but he wasn't a Christ follower wasn't honoring God with his life and I turned around I saw it was him and he came to the altar and me and Jim got to go and put our arms around our dad and love on him and that day he prayed to receive Christ as Savior and it started because this man put his faith and trust in God and then I put my faith and trust in God and then we started praying for him. And he came to know the Lord. So what I'm saying to you is this. And I, I, the story of my dad, he, man, he, he did not honor God with his life but man, God got a hold of him there. And it was the greatest, one of the greatest days of our lives. And then I always forget how long it was, but how long was it after he got saved that he ended up getting cancer? Tammy usually remembers this. How, how long was it? Six months? Was it three years? About three years after? I think it was sooner than that, maybe. He was battling. Dad was battling cancer after he had gotten saved. And it was the greatest point. And so I want to close with this, with my brother by my side. If you are here today and don't know the Lord, don't leave! Come forward at the end. I'll be over here sitting by the cross, and I'll wait for you, and I'll pray with you to accept this Savior that loves you and wants to transform you from the inside out. And if he can do that for him, and if he can do it for me and change our family's trajectory forever, he can do it for you. Amen. He can do it for you. I'm going to have to buy you a really nice barbecue lunch today. Yeah, I'll <laughs> I, take it. And I owe you some, yeah. He's Online he said he'll take it. I... I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Hmm. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. 
Let's pray together. God, I don't know who this is for. And again, this day, I don't know. My mind's been everywhere today. It's just racing today. But God, maybe, just maybe, as you put on my heart to bring my brother up here that I love so much, that put his faith in you, and then, God, I was so attractive to me that I put my faith in you and how you transformed our family. You changed it forever. And that God, for our dad to receive you as Savior was one of the greatest days we've ever had, and we will be united with him in heaven someday. God, I pray for that man or that woman that might be here today that doesn't know you, and that, God, after the service, that you would draw them to yourself, Lord, that you would bring them over here to the cross, and they would open their hearts, and that you would start something fresh and new in them that they didn't even think that could happen. And so, God, I thank you again for all the men that have just poured into so many of us. And I pray a blessing over them, God. And thank you again for this Father's Day. And for you, God, like we're just saying, our good, good Father, we thank you, God, for being who you are, loving us before we even loved you. So we thank you for this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Father's Day, and I'll be waiting here at the cross with you.